Om pronunciation Persian, QM is the seventh metropolis and also the seventh largest city in Iran. Om is the capital of Om province. It is located 140 km to the south of Tehran. At the 2016 census its population was 1,201,158. It is situated on the banks of the Om River. Om is considered holy by Shia Islam, as it is the site of the shrine of Fatima bint Musa, sister of Imam Ali ibn Musa Rida Persian Imam Reza, 789–816 CE. The city is the largest center for Shia scholarship in the world, and is a significant destination of pilgrimage, with around 20 million pilgrims visiting the city every year, the majority being Iranians but also other Shia Muslims from all around the world. Om is famous for a Persian brittle toffee known as Sohan Persian, Swan considered a souvenir of the city and sold by 2000 to 2500 Sohan shops. Om has developed into a lively industrial center owing in part to its proximity to Tehran. It is a regional center for the distribution of petroleum and petroleum products, and a natural gas pipeline from Bandar Anzali and Tehran and a crude oil pipeline from Tehran run through Om to the Abadan refinery on the Persian Gulf. Om gained additional prosperity when oil was discovered at Sarye near the city in 1956 and a large refinery was built between Om and Tehran. Geography Om, the capital of Om province, is located 125 km south of Tehran, on a low plain. The shrine of Fatima Masume, the sister of Imam Reza, is located in this city, which is considered by Shia Muslims holy. The city is located in the boundary of the central desert of Iran At the 2011 census its population was 1,074,036, comprising 545,704 men and 528,332 women. Om is counted as one of the focal centers of the Shia both in Iran and around the globe. Since the revolution, the clerical population has risen from around 25,000 to more than 45,000 and the non-clerical population has more than tripled to about 700,000. Substantial sums of money in the form of arms and Islamic taxes flow into Om to the ten marja e or source to be followed that reside there. The number of seminary schools in Om is now over 50, and the number of research institutes and libraries somewhere near 250. Its theological center and the Fatima Masume Shrine are prominent features of Om. Another very popular religious site of pilgrimage formerly outside the city of Om but now more of a suburb is called Jamkaran. Om's proximity to Tehran has allowed the clerical establishment easy access to monitor the affairs and decisions of state. Many Grand Ayatollahs possess offices in both Tehran and Om. Many people simply commute between the two cities as they are only 156 km or 97 miles apart. Southeast of Om is the ancient city of Kashan. Directly south of Om lie the towns of Dalijan, Mahalat, Narak, Pardasan City, Karhak, and Jasb. The surrounding area to the east of Om is populated by Tafresh, Sava, and Ashtian and Jafariye. Topic. Climate Om has a hot desert climate with low annual rainfall due to remoteness from the sea and being situated in the vicinity of the subtropical anticyclone aloft. Summer weather is very hot and essentially rainless, whilst in winter weather can vary from warm to, when Siberian air masses are driven south across the Elberts Mountains by blocking over Europe, frigid. An example of the latter situation was in January 2008 when minima fell to minus 23 degrees Celsius or minus 9.4 degrees Fahrenheit on the 15th, whilst earlier similar situations occurred in January 1964 and to a lesser extent January 1950, January 1972 and December 1972. History The present town of Om in central Iran dates back to ancient times. Its pre-Islamic history can be partially documented, although the earlier epochs remain unclear. Excavations at Tipa Sialk indicate that the region had been settled since ancient times, Gierschman and Vandenberger, and more recent surveys have revealed traces of large inhabited places south of Om, dating from the 4th and 1st millennium BC. 
While nothing is known about the area from Elamite, Medes, and Achaemenid times, there are significant archaeological remains from the Seleucid and Parthian epochs, of which the ruins of Kura about 70 km or 43 miles southwest of Om are the most famous and important remnants. Their dating and function have instigated long and controversial debates and interpretations, for they have been interpreted and explained variously as the remains of a Sasanian temple, or of a Seleucid Dionysian temple, or of a Parthian complex. Its true function is still a matter of dispute, but the contributions by Wolfram Kleist point to a Parthian palace that served as a station on the nearby highway and was used until Sasanian times. The recently published results of the excavations carried out in 1955 by Iranian archaeologists have, however, revived the old thesis of a Seleucid religious building. Besides Kura, which is already mentioned as Korabad at Omi in the 9th century, the region has turned up a few other remnants from this epoch, including the four Parthian heads found near Om, now kept in the National Museum of Iran in Tehran. Omi names Parthian personalities as founders of villages in the Om area. The possible mention of Om in the form of Greek names in two ancient geographical works the Tabula Putingera and Ptolemy's geographical tables remains doubtful. The Sasanian epoch offers many archaeological findings and remnants, besides the fact that various sources mention Om. The most interesting building from an archaeological point of view is the Kala Yi Doktar in Om itself, which was long thought to have served religious purposes, while more recent research points to an administrative use. The wider surroundings of Om also contain numerous traces from palaces, religious, military and administrative buildings. Some of these are mentioned by Omi, who also names many more fire temples in the urban area of present Om and its region, of which no archaeological traces are left although the location of one fire temple can probably be equated with today's Mashhad e Emam in the city. According to Omi, the most important fire temple of the area stood in the nearby village of Dizijan, Tariq e Om and some other sources also speak of genuine historical figures of the Sasanian epoch in connection with Om and its region. They shed new light on the time of the seizure of power by the first Sasanian king Ardashir I, who fought his decisive battles near Om, and the collapse of the Sasanian Empire, which is extensively reported by Ebn A. Tamkafi and the Nihayat al-Arab and names a certain Sirzad as the satrap of the region. The existence of an urban settlement in the Sasanian epoch is furthermore verified by Middle Persian sources, literary sources, inscriptions, and seals that mention in the time of Shapur I and Kawad either names Godman, Goman, and Eren Win N. Ard Kawad, both of which could be identified as Om. Altogether, one can assume that Om functioned as a small administrative unit throughout the whole Sasanian era. Probably the urban structure of the Sasanian settlement of Om can be compared with the type of city of Cte Siphon or Mad -en and consisted of several villages and little towns with Aborostagen, Mamajan, and Jamkaran as the bigger settlements that were loosely connected by defense installations. It is difficult to decipher the actual process of the Arab conquest of Om from the extant Arabic sources. According to Baladori, the first tentative conquest of Om took place in 23 by Abu Musa Ashari after a few days of fighting although Abu Musa's route through western Persia, as narrated by Baladori, appears somewhat confusing. It remains unclear who the defenders of Om were, probably fleeing Sasanian nobles and local soldiers returning from the great battles against the Arabs formed the core of the resistance. The area remained largely untouched for 60 years after the initial conquest and was probably administered from Isfahan. The first permanent settlement of Arab settlers in Om took place during the revolts of Mukhtar al Thakafi and Motar F.B. Magira B. Sabar in 66 77 685 96, when small groups of refugees moved there and Om itself was affected by the fighting between the Umayyad state power and the rebels. A decisive step for the later urban development of Om occurred when a group of Ashari Arabs came to the area. These Asharis originated in Yemen and the first important figure among them was the first conqueror of the area of Om, the above mentioned Abu Musa Ashari. Abd al -Abi. Sad and Arwaz B. Sad were grandsons of Abi Musa's nephew and led the group of Asharis that emigrated from Kufa to the region of Om. It is not exactly clear why they migrated, but it might have also been a general opposition to the Umayyad dynasty. A central element was the early contact with the leading local Zoroastrian Persian noble Yazdanfadar, as the Arabs required a great deal of pasture for their large herds of cattle and were much wealthier than the local Persians, they slowly started to buy land and take over more villages. 
The decisive step for controlling the area was the elimination of the local Persian noble class that took place after the death of Yazdanfadar in 733. The emigration and the subsequent settlement and building activities led to the fusion of the original six villages on the area of Om to an urban conglomerate which probably happened within two generations after the first coming of Arabs. Although a few names of governors and their tax assessments are known from the time after the administrative independence, the death of Fatima bint Musa, the sister of the eighth Imam of Shias Ali al Ridda in the city in 201 17 proved to be of great importance for the later history of Om. Fatima bint Musa died while following her brother to Khorasan, a region in northern Iran. The place of her entombment developed from 869 to 70 into a building that was transformed over time into today's magnificent and economically important sanctuary. In 825 to 26, a major rebellion against the tax regulations of the caliphate broke out in Om. It was caused by the refusal of the caliph al mamun to lower the yearly tax assessment as he had done in Ray. The revolt was led by an Ashari named Yahya ibn Emran, maintaining that taxes should not be paid to an unlawful ruler. Yahya was killed by troops sent by the caliph and the citizens were severely punished. The taxes were raised from 2 million to 7 million dirhams. Two years later, the taxes were again raised by 700,000 dirham by the Ashari governor Ali ibn Isa, who was subsequently deposed because he was strongly rejected by the inhabitants of Om. But in 833 Ali returned to the post of governor Wali and forcefully collected tax debts that were laid upon him by the caliph. He destroyed parts of Om and handed over a wanted rebel to caliphal authorities under al mo Tassim. Between 839 to 42 two contradicting tax assessments were carried out under turbulent circumstances which amounted to a sum of 5 million dirhams. The names of those involved have survived. The move of a hadith transmitter from Kufa to Om, which took place probably in the middle of the 9th century, indicates the increased importance of Om as a center of Shia learning. At about the same time, another military attack on the city occurred in 254 868, when Mofla, the Turkish officer of the Caliph al Mostar in, executed some of its inhabitants because of the city's refusal to pay taxes. Mofla became governor of Om and lasted in that position for at least five years. During his governorship important Alids moved to Om and there are references to close contacts between the representative of the 11th Shias Imam, Hassan al-Askari, in Om and other Comus. The representative Ahmad B. Eshak was at the same time administrator of the Fatima Sanctuary and the agent Wakil responsible for the pensions of the Alids. The first Friday mosque in Om was built in 878-79 on the site of a fire temple, although there are also confusing reports concerning a possible earlier Friday mosque. In 881-82 Om was occupied by the Turkish military leader Edgu Tegan Arabic, Yadkutakan B. Asatakan or Adkutakan, who tried to collect the tax arrears for seven years which partially ruined the guarantors some of, whom are known of these taxes. At about the same time the early Orthodox Shias achieved their victory in the town. In 893–94, at the latest, all extremists Golar were driven out of town by the leading Shia sheikh of Om, Ahmad B. Muhammad B. Isa Ashari. Probably one year later the famous Islamic mystic Hossein B. Mansa Halid stayed in Om, where he was arrested. From 895 to 96 onwards, the history of Om was connected with a family of Turkish military leaders from the army of the Caliph al Motazd, including the governor Bayran. In the same year, Bayran destroyed a big and probably still active fire temple located on the territory of the evolving city and probably opposite today's sanctuary of Fatima bint Musa. In these unstable political times Om was visited by the vizier of al Motazd, Obeid Allah ibn Soleiman, and two tax assessments were organized. An administrative peculiarity of Om was put to an end at about the same time, to wit the independent appointment of judges through the Arab inhabitants of Om until the time of al Muqtafi, which, together with the dispatch of a joint Arab-Persian delegation to the vizier Hamid ibn Abbas indicate the end of the elevated position of the Arabs in Om. The period of the governor Abbas ibn Amr Ganawi is remarkable for the presence of non twelver Shias in Om and the establishment of the office of the Jabbar financial officer as the tax broker for the city, which fostered local self determination. In 909, Hossein ibn Hamdan ibn Hamdan was appointed governor of Om and Qasan by the Caliph al Muqtada and had to assist the Caliph's army against the Safarids in Fars. 
Altogether he stayed in power only for two years before he had to return to Baghdad. In the years 301-913-14 to 315-927 the people of Om had, besides another tax assessment meanwhile the eighth, a caliphal intervention that resulted in the appointment of a governor to stabilize the administrative grip over the region. This move caused more unrest and affected the balance of power in an area that was disputed between the powers of the time Dalamites, Samanids. Beginning in 316-928 Som fell into the sphere of interest of Dalami warlords and was relieved from the direct authority of the caliph, although it changed hands several times between 928 and 943. The Dalamites brutally exploited the city through harsh taxes. With the firm establishment of Bayad's control from 340 951st 52 on, the political circumstances were less troubled than before. Although the economic situation deteriorated, no outstanding events are reported for the relatively stable political period until 988 89, but Om seems to have been isolated inside Persia because of its Shia creed. At the same time, the Fatima sanctuary was enlarged and the number of Sayyids residing in Om reached a considerable number. In 373-984 Som and its environs were affected by the revolt of the Kurdish Muhammad Barzakhani against the Bayad Fakr al dawla The population amounted to 50,000 inhabitants at the most and consisted of Persians and Arabs who had adopted the Persian of the time as their language and many social customs from the Persians, whose proportion was probably smaller than the Arabs. The Kurds lived in the countryside to the west. The Twelver Shia constituted the great majority of the population and many important Shia scholars of the time came from Om or lived there. As many as 331 male Alids lived in Om in 988–89, and they produced a good number of community leaders and there is also mention of one prominent female Alid besides Fatima bint Musa. These Alids descended from the Imams and were supported by pensions. Apart from the Shia mainstream, other Shia sects existed in the city and one can also assume the presence of Sunnis. Demis, or followers of other revealed religions Jews, Christians, and Zoroastrians must have lived in the city, too, as the payment of poll tax indicates, although their number can only be very roughly estimated at a few thousand at the end of the 9th century and must have shrunk drastically in the 10th century. The majority of these non-Muslims were Zoroastrians, who made their living mostly as farmers. Jews must have lived in Om as well, but information on them is scant. It is striking that the formerly dominant Asharis had lost their leading positions by the end of the 10th century. This points at a new social situation that allowed assimilated Persians to join the local establishment. The city's topography in the 10th century still reflected the evolutionary merging of the original six villages, these were still separated by fields. The town center was located in the village of Mamajan, which was connected to other parts of the city on the other side of the river by four bridges. There were about eight squares whose function is not clear and three mosques within the city. There is almost no information about madrasas. The sanctuary must have still been quite small as only two cupolas are mentioned. A bazaar and bathhouses must have existed, too, as well as certain administrative buildings prison, mint. Five bigger and eight smaller roads indicate good traffic connections, which were supported by at least three or maybe even nine city gates. Om was then in a difficult economical and social position. Many houses inside the city, as well as bridges and mills, were ruined, and the roads and agriculture were suffering from an insecure situation. This has to be attributed to difficult social circumstances and excessive taxation. The water supply seems to have been satisfactory and the Asharis seem to have undertaken continuous renovation works on the irrigation channels between 733 and 900. The Aaris were also the proprietors of the water rights, which were safeguarded in the Water Authority that regulated the water shares. The system made the Aaris the wealthiest inhabitants of Om and stayed in place until 347-958-59, when they were expropriated by the Bayads, which consequently brought about a decline in the whole system of irrigation. Although there were attempts at restoration in 371-981-82, only three of originally 21 channels had flowing water which meant enough drinking water was supplied for the population, but the available amount could not have been adequate for agricultural purposes. Altogether the state of cultivation in Om seems to have resembled that of the other regions of Persia, although the 30 different crops and plants are only indirectly mentioned in connection with the tax assessments. 
The soil is reported to have good quality and produced big quantities of food. Little is known about animal husbandry in the region, but the considerable number of 51 mills existed, of which a fifth was in decay. Legends speak of mineral deposits and mines of silver, iron, gold and lead, while Kurds seem to have produced salt from a lake nearby Siom Lake. The production of chairs, textiles, and saddle equipment indicates craftsmanship. The city's taxation has to be distinguished between the more proper rule of the Abbasid tax bureaucracy and the time of the Daylamid warlords where rules were bent arbitrarily. A stunning diversity of taxes is known, often meant to serve the ever greedy Abbasid bureaucracy and the Daylamid and Bayad war machinery, but the Karaj land tax, which was composed of many different separate sums, was the most important single tax existing in Om at least since post Sasanian times. Within the known 18 tax figures ranging over 160 years, there are great differences, and the tax figures vary from 8 million to 2 million dirhams with a mean value at around 3 million. In taxation Om always followed the solar calendar with its own local variation, starting from the death of the Sasanian Yazdegerd III. A highly differentiated tax administration existed and is known in great detail. Twenty-four tax collectors are listed from 189-804-05 to 371-981-82 plus two Jahabada who acted as mediators after the attempt to enforce collective responsibility by the taxpayers had failed. The information in the Tariq e Om on taxation also mentioned by name 21 tax districts in the region with 900 villages. Little is known about the time until the period of Seljuki dominance. In 387 997, Om became involved in internal Bayad quarrels and was subsequently unsuccessfully besieged. In 418 1027-28, Om fell under the rule of Sarayas from the Kakuyid dynasty and a few years later 1030 it became part of the Ghaznavid domain. The Seljuki did not occupy Om at once but left the town and Jebel in Kakuyid hands for ten years. From 442 1050-51 on, the city was under Seljuk rule and nothing is known about its fate until 487 1094s. Afterwards the growing instability of the Seljuk Empire involved Om in the power struggles between the competing Seljuk factions in Jebel and the city changed hands many times. The most stable period seemed to have been the 14 years 513 when Om lay in Sunja's sphere of power and witnessed the construction of a second Friday mosque. Surprisingly, Om enjoyed relative prosperity in its economy in the Seljuk period. The rigidly Sunni Seljuk seemed to have practiced a pragmatic policy and one of the main sources of this time Abd al -Jalil Kazvani speaks of good relations between the famous vizier Nizam al-Mulk and Seljuk sultans on the one hand, and members of the local nobility on the other. Sultans reportedly visited the sanctuary although no specific sultan is mentioned by name and in general no religiously motivated punitive action against Om is known to have taken place. Under Seljuk rule a considerable number of religious buildings were erected. At least ten madrasas are known by name. Two Friday mosques seem to have existed in Seljuk times, the old one was renovated and a new one, located outside of the town area, was built in 528 1133-34 by the order of Sultan Togrel II Persian. Slan Tareldom Om must have expanded during this period, but precise reasons for its prosperity are not known. A family of Hosseinid Alids was influential and provided a number of community leaders. Another important Shia family was that of the Darwidar Persian, Doidar whose members were judges Arabic, Kadian town, which indicates the transformation of Om from a town governed by the Sunnis to a completely shy domain. The following epochs of the Elderguzedids and Horazmashars lasted for almost 30 years and brought different systems of rule in quick succession. The two noteworthy events of this period are the execution of Ez al-Din Yahya, the Naqib of the Shias, by the Tekesh in 592-1196 and the work on the tiles of the sanctuary, probably in 605-13-1208-17, which indicate a certain economic prosperity at a time of unstable political conditions. 
from 614 1217-18 until the Mongol attack, Om remained under Muhammad II of Khwarezm. The Mongol invasion led to the total destruction of Om by the armies of the Mongol generals, Jebe and Subede, in 621 1224s and left the city in ruins for at least 20 years, when the sources Jovani tell of the levying of taxes. Twenty years later, reconstruction and repair works, probably sponsored by some wealthy inhabitants, were being done on the mausoleums of Shia saints in the city, which contradict those sources, such as Hamd al Mostorfi, that describe Om as a ruined and depopulated city throughout the Ilkhanid period. Besides, the fact that the Ilkhanid vizier Sams al Din Jovani took refuge in the Fatima bint Musa sanctuary in 683 1284 indicates that the city must have experienced at least a modest comeback. The city walls were probably rebuilt, and, moreover, four graves of saints are known to have been constructed between 721,300 and 1365. Additionally, some fine tiles are known from this period. Nothing is known about the irrigation systems of the town, but nearby a dam was built in the Ilkhanid period and the local administration must have functioned again, as the name of a judge shows. The agricultural situation is described as flourishing with a variety of cultivated plants and a good supply of water, and legends indicate the use of deposits of mineral resources. Information exists concerning taxes for the post-Mongolian period. Om paid 40,000 dinars, but more remarkable is the fact that some of the surrounding rural districts paid as much as Om or even more, which suggests that the whole administrative structure of districts had also changed. In the late 14th century, the city was plundered by Tamerlane and the inhabitants were massacred. Om gained special attention and gradually developed due to its religious shrine during the Safavid dynasty. By 1503, Om became one of the important centers of theology in relation to Shia Islam, and became a significant religious pilgrimage site and pivot. The city suffered heavy damage again during the Afghan invasions, resulting in consequent severe economic hardships. Om further sustained damage during the reign of Nader Shah and the conflicts between the two households of Zandi and Qajariye in order to gain power over Iran. Finally, in 1793, Om came under the control of Aga Muhammad Khan Qaja. On being victorious over his enemies, the Qajar Sultan Fath Ali Shah was responsible for the repairs done on the sepulchre and holy shrine of Hazrat Mazum. As he had made such a vow, the city of Om began another era of prosperity in the Qajar era. After Russian forces entered Karaj in 1915, many of the inhabitants of Tehran moved to Om due to reasons of proximity, and the transfer of the capital from Tehran to Om was even discussed. But the British and Russians defeated prospects of the plan by putting Ahmad Shah Qajar under political pressure. Coinciding with this period, a national defense committee was set up in Tehran, and Om turned into a political and military apex opposed to the Russian and British colonial powers. As a center of religious learning, Om fell into decline for about a century from 1820 to 1920, but had a resurgence when Sheikh Abdul Karim Hari Yazdi accepted an invitation to move from Sultanabad, now called Iraq, Iran, where he had been teaching, to Om. In 1964-65, before his exile from Iran, the Ayatollah Khomeini led his opposition to the Pahlavi dynasty from Om. After the Islamic Revolution in 1979, Khomeini spent time in the city before and after moving to Tehran. Governance Authority for the city lies with the mayor, who is elected by a municipal board. The municipal board is periodically elected by the city's residents. The municipal central office is located on Saheli Street. The current mayor of Om is Muhammad Delbari. Topic: <inaudible> Old Districts. Topic: <inaudible> 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 Modern Districts. Topic: <inaudible> 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 Tourism. Topic: Historical and cultural heritage. Iran's Cultural Heritage Organization lists 195 sites of historical and cultural significance in Om, but the more visited sites of Om are: 
Topic museums Astanay Mogadase Museum OM Central Museum Anthropology Museum of OM The Museum of Traditional Arts The Museum of Natural History and Wildlife The Museum of Astronomy Topic Hotels Topic Educational Institutions OM is well known for its many religious seminaries and institutes that offer advanced religious studies, which made this city the largest center for Shia scholarship in the world. There are an estimated 50,000 seminarians in the city coming from 80 countries, including 6,000 from Pakistan alone. OM has seminaries for women and some non-Shia students. Most of the seminaries teach their students modern social sciences and Western thought as well as traditional religious studies. Topic: Hawza Ilmiram Om Seminary. The Hawza, a short form of Al Hawza Al Ilmiya, which presently consists of over 200 education and research centers and organizations, catering for over 40,000 scholars and students from over 80 list of sovereign states. The modern Om Hawza was revitalized by Abdul Karim Hari Yazdi and Grand Ayatollah Borujerdi and is barely a century old. There are nearly 300,000 clerics in Iran seminaries. At present Hossein Vahid Khorasani heads Hawza Ilmir Om. <laughs> <laughs> Universities and seminaries <laughs> Fordow Uranium Enrichment Facility The Fordow Uranium Enrichment Facility is located 20 miles northeast of Om. In January 2012 the International Atomic Energy Agency IAEA announced that Iran had started producing uranium enriched up to 20% for medical purposes and that material remains under the agency's containment and surveillance. Iranian authorities state the facility is built deep in a mountain because of repeated threats by Israel to attack such facilities, which Israel believes can be used to produce nuclear weapons. However, attacking a nuclear facility so close to a city considered so holy in Shia Islam brings concern of a potential risk of a Shiite religious response. Om Space Center Om Space Center is one of the two places where the Iranian Space Agency is launching its suborbital Shahab 3 ballistic missiles, the other being the Imam Shah Space Center. Twin towns Om is twinned with Gallery See also Fatima al Masume Shrine Shia Islam Abbas Omi Iranian Architecture University of Om Om Seminary Om Rug Pardison City <laughs>